So in this video, I want to show us how to solve some exponential and logarithmic equations, ones that will probably involve logarithms of some kind. Like let's say we have the equation 2 to the x equals 5. Well, if you want to solve this equation, you want to get x all by itself. But to get rid of x, you've got to move the base 2 to the other side. How do you get rid of the base 2? Like if I had something like 2 plus x was equal to 5, what I would do is I would subtract 2 from both sides so that they cancel out. Or if I had instead 2x is equal to 5, I would divide by 2 on both sides to get x equals 5 halves, right? You have to perform the inverse operation. So what's the inverse operation here? You're going to be taking the log base 2 on both sides of the equation. That's how you get rid of the 2. And so you're going to get log base 2 of 2 to the x. In that situation, the log base 2 and the exponential base 2 will cancel out, and you end up with x is equal to the log base 2 of 5. That is the answer, for which we can estimate that with a calculator. Don't worry about how that's done necessarily right now, uh, but your calculator could estimate this as 2.3219. Um, it's going to be an irrational number, but that, that's the answer right there. For the moment being, focus on the exact answer. The solution here is the log base 2 of 5. Okay. Now, what if you have the equation x to the fifth is equal to 4? Now, you might be thinking that we use a logarithm here because there is some exponential expression on the left-hand side. But the left-hand side, where's the variable? The variable is the base of the exponential expression, not the exponent itself. And so this is not really an exponential function. This is a power function, right? We don't want to move the x to the other side. We want to move the 5 to the other side. It's the 5 that needs to move. And so how do you get rid of the fifth power? In that situation, if you have x to the fifth is equal to 4, you don't want to use a logarithm. You want to take the fifth root of both sides. Whoops, the fifth root of both sides, thus giving you the solution x equals the fifth root of 4, for which we can use a calculator, again, to estimate that solution to get 1.3195. But the important thing is, when you look at these two examples, a and b right here, the first one we solve using logarithms because the base is a constant and the exponent is a variable. But on, on the second example here, we don't use logarithms, we use radicals. We have to use, in this case, the fifth root. And that's because the base is the variable and the exponent is a constant. The, the location of the variable makes a big difference. So when you see something like a to the b right here, and you know this is equal to c, how do you solve an equation like this? Well, the thing is, if, if in this situation a is constant, whoops, a is constant, and b is the variable, in that situation, then you're going to use a logarithm, right? You're going to use the log base a. On the other hand, if a is the variable and b is the constant, then in that situation, you're going to use the bth root, right? So use radicals versus logarithms. It's an important distinction to remember. Now, if you have a logarithmic equation, it's usually fairly easy what to do. The inverse of a logarithm is going to be the exponential function. So if you have log base 3 of x and you want to solve this equation right here, you got to move the base 3 from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And as you move from log base 3 to the other side, it'll turn into an exponential. So you're going to get x equals something. The 8 will be on the right-hand side. The 3 is on the right-hand side. You have to be careful, though. This is going to be x equals 3 to the 8th. You don't want to, by the mistake, put 8 cubed. Right, Because that would be like, oh, I got rid of a radical. No, you're not cubing both sides. You're moving the base. Log base 3 will move to the other side to become the exponential base 3. So we get 3 to the 8th for which, I mean, that's 3 times 3 times 3. You're going to do that 8 times. That gives you 6,561 as the result there. Uh, again, I use a calculator to help me out on that one. And then for the next one, if you have the natural log of x is equal to 8, how do you solve this one? Remember, the natural log is just log base e. Right? And so when you move the natural log to the side, you're going to switch to the exponential base e. So you get x is equal to e to the 8th, for which you can consult your calculator and see that that's going to be approximately 2,980.9580. It's an irrational number. I'll just give you four decimal places right there. Now, when you're working base e, most people know to put e as the base because, again, that's nearly how you always do it. But the confusion 
comes down here, right? You don't want to say eight thirds by mistake. The order of the exponents matters. If you switch the base and the exponent, it gives you a different result. So try to avoid that. Make sure that as you move from logarithmic form to exponential form, the base is always base three. You don't switch from base three to base eight. It'll be base three log, base three exponential. And if you can keep those things straight, then you're going to be fine solving these logarithmic equations. And then also as a reminder with these exponential type expressions, right? Pay attention to who's the base and who's the variable. If the variable is the exponent, use an exponential. That, that is, you'll use the logarithm, it's inverse. If the variable is the base, that's a power function, you'll use a radical to solve the equation.